Nationalism, a feeling of pride and loyalty to one's nation, often to the detriment of another, an ideology that has shaped human history and still affects the world now. However, can an understanding of nationalism help us understand the world today? To answer this question, we first need to understand the causes and consequences to nationalism. I've chosen three case studies to examine and help us with this. They are American Manifest Destiny, the Confederation of British North America, and the Indian Act. Let's take a look at our first case study, American Manifest Destiny. Soon after the United States of America was created, the 13 colonies began expanding westward. Settlers started to believe it was God's will for their westward expansion, and this created a sense of nationalism between them. The settlers had pride in their nation, which drove them to continue the expansion, and many consequences would occur due to this, such as the increase in land for the settlers, or conflicts like the American Civil War and the Mexican-American War. Things would also stay the same throughout the event. Examples include the continued increase in population and power for the USA, and the sense of nationalism the settlers felt. We can link this event to today, because just like how the settlers had a shared belief that the land beyond was theirs, today many countries believe they own the South China Sea. Nations such as China, US, and many Southeast Asian countries argue over who should own the South China Sea, and due to this, a sense of nationalism is created towards each one's nation. Now, onto our next case study, the Confederation of the British North American Colonies. In the early 1860s, many British North American colonies such as the province of Canada, Prince Edward Island, and more began fearing a potential American invasion. Because of this, a man named John A. Macdonald believed that the multiple British North American colonies needed to unite. If they also banded together, not only would they be stronger and decrease the chance of an invasion, but would also boost their economies and form stronger alliances. Nationalism was involved because all the colonies shared a common language, similar cultures, and close geography excluding Canada East, which drove them to confederation. Changes that would occur include the creation of a confederation and a railway being built. As well as changes, some things that continue to stay the same are the loss of land for the indigenous and the power of Britain. This case study is relevant today because in Quebec, there are still people who want independence, just like in the Confederation. Now, on to our final case study, the Indian Act. Soon after the Confederation of Canada, in 1867, the government made a series of laws known as the Indian Act. The purpose of the Indian Act was to assimilate the First Nation people while taking their land. This can be shown due to the residential school system, which would essentially assimilate and shame the First Nation children and the numbered treaties which saw the loss of land from British Columbia to the Beaufort Sea. Major changes happened to the First Nations, such as the assimilation of many children and the banning of many cultural events. The things that would stay the same would be the mistreatment to the indigenous, as the last residential school was only closed in 1996, and the power of the government over the First Nations. This is relevant today because oppression can still be seen in modern society, such as the death of George Floyd or the BLM movement fighting for equality. Now, after going through all three case studies, how can the understanding of nationalism we learned help us understand today? Well, for starters, we can already find similar events or consequences due to the case studies, and by looking to the past, it can help us predict future events. This can also help us prevent bad decisions in the future or protect ourselves by learning from nationalism. Understanding nationalism from different point of views can also help us understand why certain people today believe in what they believe. In the end, nationalism is just an ideology, but an understanding of it can help us shape the world.